Hello art friends, Melissa here. Today I'm excited to be part of Sean Petit's One Stencil Nine Ways YouTube Hop. You'll find a link to the next person in the hop in the description box below the video. Sean's given away a free stencil of choice on each participant's channel, so that means you have nine chances to win. To qualify for the drawing on my page, leave a comment and like my video. It's that simple. Deadline to enter is Sunday, November 29th, and the winner will be announced November 30th. Today I'm sharing an art journal page with a photo of my first snow experience as a child. I'm working in my 8x8 Arteza art journal, and I've already pre-gessoed the pages. So let's get started. I begin by adhering some collage paper randomly to my pages. And I'm using matte gel for that. I'm using pieces of pages I tore from an elementary algebra book and an old Webster's dictionary. I recently went to a used bookstore and found the algebra book. Before art journaling, I spent a lot of money on scrapbooking, card making, and stamping, so I naturally gravitate to wanting to add some of my stash to my art journaling. I found some card panels from a card kit with snowflakes already embossed on it. I have a lot of embossing folders, so I think I'll be using them to add texture to my backgrounds more often. This paper is heavier, so I'm using the matte gel. If you're adhering something lightweight and thin like tissue paper or even the book paper, you can use your matte medium, which is more fluid. I'm also using some doilies to add texture to my background as well. And here's what it looks like with all of those elements adhered in place. And I'm just about ready to move on to adding some paint. I start out a little timid, not really knowing which direction I was going. I'm using golden paints in light phthalo blue, phthalo blue green shade, and Payne's gray. I mixed all of these with a little titanium white to create some different values. So you'll see me using these same colors throughout the whole project. I'm using a palette knife at first and then my finger to apply the paint. And at times you'll see me use a baby wipe to either remove or blend some of the paint. Here I'm using a paper piercing tool to create some marks or scratches in the paint. You have to be really quick though and do that before the paint dries. My paint was drying really quick. I didn't want this entry to just be an art project but wanted to really connect with it since I was using a photo of myself. So before I started I searched for a poem or quote about snow. I came across one that fit perfect. It reads, Snowfall rouses our inner child to dream and play once more. And it's by Angie Wheeland Crosby. And that was perfect, especially since that's what I did with this background. I just played. I kept trying different things and building the layers until it felt right. I tried a little purple paint to see how I would like it, but that didn't work at all. And I'm going to end up covering that up in a little bit. The tool I'm using here is really old. It's a texture comb that you can use with paint or clay. I did a search and if you Google texture comb for paint or clay, you should see some options if you're interested in one. I really don't remember my first snow experience. I've primarily lived in South Georgia, Florida, and Texas, so I don't have a lot of experience with snow at all. So I spent some time thinking about how far back I remember playing in the snow. I remembered when I was about 8 to 10 years old living in a mobile home park up on a hill in Kingston Springs, Tennessee. It was a small little town. I actually used Google Earth and strolled down the road we lived on. And that little mobile home park is still there. This opened up a lot of memories I hadn't thought about in many years, and not all of them good. We didn't always have money for the gas furnace, so my mom would have us all sleep in the same room with one little electric space heater. 
our mobile home was up on a hill with only one access, so when it was icy, we were snowed in and had to walk to a nearby corner store. I think this explains why I hate cold weather so much. But I do remember a lot of fun times as well. We had some older neighbor kids who had a sled and they would let us join them. I remember building snowmen and having snowball fights with my brother. And I'm wondering how many of you remember watching Frosty the Snowman. I think I'm going to go back and journal all of this out on the back of the second page. And I want to add that quote on the front of the second page as well. All of this has got me hoping I get to play in the snow someday with my grandkids. I'm living in South Texas, so the odds are not good here. So there's still no plan here. I'm just kind of intuitively adding different shades of paint here and there. I'm using some of the darker blue to lightly rub over the snowflakes on the embossing paper to make them more prominent. I really like how that looks. I'm definitely going to use this technique again. At this point, I was happy with where I was on the background. I liked the variation in color and was ready to add something different. I wanted the words of the quote to be in the background, so I added those with a Sharpie. And then I just made some random loose marks with a black china marker. It's called a marker, but it's not a traditional marker like an ink marker, and it's not from China. It's a wax pencil that is water and fade resistant, and they're really cheap. You can get them in black or white. So now I was ready to knock some of this back and add some more white or light to the project. One of my favorite ways to do that is with a stencil. I'm using the Mediterranean Duo One stencil by Sean Petit. You'll find links to all the stencils in the description box below the video. I'm using a makeup sponge to pounce on some white titanium paint. In the past, I've used gesso to do this, but I would have had to have applied more than one coat to completely cover what was underneath. The golden white titanium is thicker and covers better. And when pouncing on paint with a makeup sponge, less is more, especially if you want crisp lines. I pounced the sponge in some paint, and then I pounced it a few more times off to the side on the palette to remove any excess paint. After that, I'll apply some white paint around the edges of the pages. And here's what it looks like after completing those steps, and I'm ready to add another layer. So I'm going to start dry brushing on paint at this point. And again, I'm using a wipey to either wipe off some of the paint or blend it out all around the edges, kind of soften it. Just keep in mind that if the paint dries, you can use hand sanitizer or alcohol to remove some of the paint. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to invite you to check out my library where I have videos organized by project and manufacturer. I have a playlist for Sean Petit as well. I had to slow down my video production for now because I'm working a lot of extra hours through the end of the year, but I hope to start posting more videos regularly in January. See how pieces of all the other layers are just kind of peeking through? I don't know how it'll all turn out, but I'm loving the progress and I know each layer in some small way will contribute to the completed project. I'm liking the background even more after doing the dry brushing, so now I'm going to move on to more mark making. I'm using a little cardboard tube 
and I'll use a plastic lid from one of my spray inks and a straw to add some circles. Now I'm just applying some of the Payne's Gray Acrylic Paint to a piece of burlap and I'm going to stamp that to add some more texture. And I'll do that with the light and medium shades of blue that I mixed up as well. And here's what it looks like after adding all of that. I created a lighter gray, mixing the Payne's gray with some titanium white. And now I'm stamping that on with a piece of corrugated cardboard. So it's giving me those horizontal lines. And this is where I come back in and add more circles with the cap from my spray ink and with a straw. So mark making doesn't have to be hard. Just use things from around your house. You probably have things in your studio you can use. If you're looking for more inspiration for mark making, I actually have a playlist in my library. It's the 3x5 Art Cards playlist. I'll put a link to the playlist that I've mentioned in the description box below as well. Now I'm dry brushing on some white acrylic paint. Just kind of blending things. I'm going to use the Scribble Marks 1 and Scribble Marks 3 stencils from Sean Petit to add some more marks with some white paint. When I'm trying to pick out multiple stencils to use in a project, I think about what shapes they are. So, for instance, the first stencil that I used is a, a larger size, and then these are little small squares. So sometimes what looks best is using shapes, patterns, or images that complement each other, but also contrast each other. I am really loving all the layers and how this background is looking now, so I'm pretty much ready to add my photo, snowflakes, and my title. I want the title to be in the right lower corner, but it's a little busy in the background down there. So to make sure that the title pops off the page, I'm dry brushing on some white paint first. And I'm going to continue to do some dry brushing with that white paint and some scratching into that, just kind of bringing everything together. Also, I kind of have an idea of where I'm going to add my blue snowflakes as well, so trying to lighten up the background in those areas in preparation for that. And here's what it looks like after dry brushing on the white paint. I'm using the Christmas Words Joyful stencil to add my title. I mixed the Payne's Gray with some titanium white to create more of a navy blue color. That's what I'll be using for the title in my snowflakes. And this is the snowflakes and stars stencil that we're all using today in our projects. And this is what it looked like after I stenciled on all the snowflakes. I'm using my China marker again to add some more marks. Off camera, I did a little stamping with one of my mini background stamps, and you'll notice that in the final piece. Now I'm using a little more navy blue paint on my finger. 
and I'm just lightly moving it over the background, trying to catch some of those raised areas like the snowflakes along the right edge of the page. And then I'm also going to rub it around the edges of the pages. I hope you're inspired to create a wintry project of your own. That wraps up today's video. Don't forget to comment and like my video so you can qualify for the drawing for my YouTube page. All the info, links to the stencils, and link to the next Creative Team Members video can be found below the video. Just click the Show More button. All right, that wraps up today's project. Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't done so already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber to my channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video and then the bell beside it. See you next time.